All right. You know that at SCAN, one of the topics we speak about frequently is caregiving. And I think most people who are out there, if you're not a caregiver now, at some point in your life, you're going to be one. My guest today is Congressman Andy Kim, and he recently had his own caregiving experience. He learned a few things along the way, and he's going to share that with us. So if you want to know more, please just stay tuned. Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Scan FYI. My very special guest today is Congressman Andy Kim. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. And, you know, Andy, before we get into our, our whole situation together, today is uh, September 11th, very important day in the United States, and I know you want to say something. Yeah, look, um, you know, it's it's a day that you know we should all make sure we're taking time to reflect upon, you know, reflect upon those whose lives were lost uh, in that horrible tragedy and also just you know, how it changed our lives. You know, I was a sophomore in college when September 11th happened um, and all of a sudden I, I decided to dedicate my life to national security, trying to protect this country. On the 10th anniversary of September 11th, I was working out in Afghanistan as a you know, civilian advisor to the military. And on the 20th anniversary, I was at Ground Zero uh, observing uh, the anniversary there as a member of Congress. So it's something that has shaped my life of service and I know it's important to a lot of people. So I just ask people to take a pause today, uh, just reflect yes. upon those lives lost and to think about, you know, how it is we always need to come together. Unity as a country is our strength. It's what keeps us secure. And I know like that can be challenging right now, but I, I hope we can remember those times where we had that unity. Thank you. All right. Thank you for saying that. All right. Well, you have had a recent experience that many of us have already gone through, and it happens for people at all stages in their lives. So I don't want to give too much of it away. Why don't you kind of jump in and what happened? Yeah, just a little look. Um, just just uh, a few months ago, um, my father uh, had a bad fall, and you know, just really you know had to go with the surgery, and it, it really turned everything upside down. Um, you know, he was living on his own. Uh, he had an apartment with stairs, and then he obviously can never go back there. And you know, trying to figure out how to give him the care that he needs and the challenges that that are there, and. You know, there were added difficulties of language barrier as, um, you know, it was, it was difficult for him to communicate in English as he often speaks in Korean. So, you know, I just found it really, um, really, really difficult, um, you know, try to make sure he's getting the care that he needs, uh, but try to navigate it. I mean, it was really difficult to understand what he might be eligible for under Medicare. And we also found that so many of the types of care that, you know, he, that he might need are unbelievably expensive, you know, and, and it was just really uh, difficult to try to process, you know, how is it that we can afford this, um, you know, especially when, you know, he hasn't been able to save up much over his life um, and, you know, our family trying to figure out how we work together to address it. So we're still going through this. Right. Uh, we're still, you know, a lot of sleepless nights trying to figure out what comes next and, you know, I know that this has happened, you know, as I talk about it more, you know, people, so many people come up to me and tell me about, you know, the experience they had with their father oh, or mother or grandparents or, you know, others. And, you know, I, I think that that really just shows, um, as you said, how universal this challenge of care is in our country and how we need to do a lot better. We, we do. So a couple of questions just so this happened to your dad while he was home. And this, so that's another thing that is a kind of a typical thing that it the the injury or the the problem happens right while you're in your own home. Well, the, he was no, he was actually uh, you know out out um, in a you know, shopping center just right around the corner. Now. Oh, um, oh! And took a fall in the parking lot and got rushed to the hospital from there. But you're right. I mean, look, you know, a lot of times it's, it's a place that he had been many many times. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, it can be very familiar places. And perhaps that's often sometimes when we let our guard down, we get distracted or you know other things like that. So you know, I, I agree with you. Those, those challenges and those problems can happen anywhere. So how old was your dad when the, uh, this is a recent thing? How old it's is just your dad? Happened. Yeah, he's in his late seventies. Okay. Uh, you know, he is somebody that you know he he struggled with 
you know, he's a survivor of polio. He had polio since he was a baby. Um, so, he, you know, he's always had challenges, um, difficulties sometimes with walking, you know, one of his legs much weaker than the other. So, you know, so it was something that we were always worried about. But you know, certainly, you know, now more than ever, as he's getting older, just becomes you know a lot more difficult for the body to, to manage and handle and frankly recover from these types of accidents. So you probably just listening to you. So you probably thought that this might be something that you would be faced with inevitably because of your dad's issues and his age. And then like so many people, there's an injury or an accident and it just propels you forward into this new world that you weren't even prepared for. And yeah, it that's like right. What happened. Yeah. And, and I'll be, I'll be very frank here. Um, you know, like once it happened, I felt some guilt sometimes. I'm like, ugh, like, you know, we should have done more to try to prepare. Not that we could have prepared every circumstance and this particular one, you know, again, not out of our control in that way, but you know, it just, I should have been, you know, a part of me is like, I should have had a better understanding of what could have happened, you know, what could happen and what options are next. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people, you know, we, we feel this sometimes the, this regret that we weren't better prepared um, you know, more knowledgeable about the options that are out there, but, you know, like, look, you know, we're, we're busy. I got a, I got a seven year old and an eight year old. So I got little boys that I'm trying to take care of and right. trying to make sure that they're, you know, growing up and you can imagine that, you know, that challenge of care on that side. And I've, I've heard the phrase, you know, sandwich generation a lot over the last couple of weeks as, you know, as You're I talk in. about, you know, dealing yep. with, you know, care for my kids and now care for mm. my parents. Um, and just feeling like I'm squeezed on both ends and uncertain how to be able to, to manage and navigate that. It's, it's a lot. Of, it's a whole lot that we're going through right now. So we always talk about, you know, SCAN because we, we, we deal with seniors. And so we always talk about being prepared. And I mean, I feel like this is, you know, this is a cautionary tale about being prepared. But the truth is that for most of us, we're not prepared because until it really happens to you and you're in the moment, that's when that's for most people when they first have to start thinking about where do I go? What do I do? And some people might say, well, you know, Andy, you're, you're a congressman. Why wouldn't you know about all of this? But you're, why would you, why would you know about it? Yeah. I mean, look, I, you know, I asked myself some of those questions of just like, you know, you know, it, you know, I do engage with, you know, questions about Medicare and Medicaid and, and other issues for constituents. It doesn't mean that I'm a, you know, a healthcare navigator level expertise or whatnot. Um, but, you know, you're right. Like, you know, for me, I, I do have greater familiarity with a lot of these programs. Part of me is like, look, if I can't, if I'm having trouble understanding, you know, some of these options that are out there and, you know, I'm a United States congressman. How does the average person, you know, kind of engage? But you're right. Like until you actually go through it, you know, I, I hear I've heard a lot of this from other people, and I've tried to do my best to empathize and, and think through how to address it. Um, but th there's nothing quite like the wake up call of, of going through it. Um, and I know my circumstances is you know different and has differences from others, and, and you know some of the stories I've heard from others are much worse than what my family's going through. Um, but, you know, it does give me a window and an insight into the difficulties as well as just the emotional challenge of just um, how do you, you know, when your life is moving a million miles in, in uh, a second in one direction, you know, as this, you know, this happened to me, like literally right before the, the primary election, um, a lot that obviously is going on in my life, uh, but I have to prioritize my family. I have to just say, look, like I only have one dad. I have to do my best to to try to make sure that he gets the care that he needs. So then the question is, how did you figure it out? How did you fig how did you go from, you know, the shock of the situation to, OK, this is what we do. This is where we go. This is how we do it. How did you figure it out? Yeah, I mean, look, um, you know, I, I, I'd say you know, my, my sister and I, you know, we really tried to just you know, break it down into different components, um, you know, and, and some of this is about healthcare, but some of it's just other parts like, you know, we, we talked to, you know, the social worker at the 
uh, you know, the, you know, the sub EQ rehab about, you know, some of these different options that are out there and just trying to learn. Um, also, I mean, but again, some of it is not just about healthcare. Like I had to, like, as I, as I told you, my father was, you know, renting an apartment that he could no longer ever go back to because of the stairs. And I had to figure out how to, to close that out. And I had to move him right. out of it and move all that stuff that he's had for decades in there, you know, out of it and figure out where to try to get him care going forward. So a lot of it was tough, you know, a, a combination of, you know, just asking around to people I know who've had similar circumstances, people who you know, might have better understanding of, of elder care and, um, and, and things like that. But, you know, there, I can't say that there was like any one-stop shop that we found that, that yeah. could really help us, you know, kind of unpack our lives here. Um, and, and that, you know, that definitely was uh, difficult. If I didn't have my sister, I think I definitely would have lost my mind. I think it would have been too much for, 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 for me to be able to handle while still trying to keep up with my job and, and my kids and my family. It, was, it, it would have been oh, too that much. Bring, that, you know, let me say that brings up a good point. So I'm guessing your employer was somewhat flexible. Had to be, right? So what about all the people that go through a situation like this and they don't have the flexibility on the job to say, hey, I, I got to help my family. How, can you imagine how difficult that would be? Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, for people who might not have um, any semblance of pay time off or, or yeah. even just flexibility in that way. And, you know, there were some challenges where I have because, you know, my, my, a lot of my work is out of state. I'm down in D.C., a lot and you know my father and my family back in new jersey so there were times where i was down in washington dc for votes and trying to navigate this all and there was you know a couple times where i had to you know just drive immediately back from dc because of some further health complication at the hospital and you know you just have to drop it and you know and and and, and go but you know i'm glad i was uh, able to so no, you're right. It's you know, that's a huge part of the problem of of care and how unrecognized it often is. You know, in terms of how much it takes. You know, and for instance, you know, I was just on the phone with someone who's been a, a longtime advocate um, when it comes to Alzheimer's, and she's somebody that's you know, had to care for both her, both of her parents. Um, uh, unfortunately, suffered under uh, under Alzheimer's. And, you know, she had to, this person I talked to, you know, she had to, you know, like basically leave her job for a period yeah. of time and, yeah. and, and try to care for her parents. And it just, it is something that can really take over. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it, that's something that you know, our, our country has never really fully confronted, you know, just how much strain it puts on families and how damaged it can be in so many different ways. Does it feel like, you know, within Congress that there's any um, understanding of this and acknowledgement that this is even an issue in this in this country? You know, that uh, when you're in a situation like this and, and there isn't necessarily paid time off, I mean, you might have maternity leave, let's say, but this is a whole other kind of family crisis situation and it doesn't always get resolved in 48 hours, as you know. Yeah. Do you ever oh, do you see an opportunity for this to improve? So uh, I, I do see a growing recognition, but certainly not to the level that you know, I, I think it needs to be at. Um, but you know, with the legislation we were trying to push a few years back with the Build Back Better, you know, a large portion of that was about the care economy. <laughs> it was, you know, actions about you know increase child care affordability. It was about yeah. um, the child tax credit. It was about um, universal pre-K. So things of trying to help with care in that direction. And then, you know, about trying to increase reimbursement, uh, you, know, you know, basically increase, um, you know, compensation for caregivers uh, so that, you know, we can be more competitive right now when, you know, with minimum wages going up in New Jersey and elsewhere, you know, uh, you can, work a job at, in retail or whatnot uh, for a similar price to that of being a caregiver. Caregivers tough, care, caregiving is tough work. You know, yes, it, it is, is demanding, it is physical, it is long hours, it is emotional. And, you know, like if someone's like, I can work a simpler job that isn't as taxing, 
um, sometimes they will choose to do that. So, you know, we should try to make sure we're compensating people for that. We should also be able to help family caregivers who, again, are often putting aside their own jobs and careers to try to navigate this. You know, I mean, that's, if you think about just the amount of actual wages that could be uh, here in this country, yeah. and, you know, so many people who, who are in the workforce in a direct way, but are still contributing you know, still providing care. And so, yes, we tried to push that, but, you know, it, it wasn't something that we could get bipartisan support on. And, and I found that to be really frustrating because, you know, I'm sure the people, you know, people, regardless of their political leanings or, or affiliation, all these families are struggling with this, you know, this the challenges of, yeah. This is a universal problem. Yeah. You know, it, it's a human problem. And, I don't always feel we do the best job in the United States of, of, you know, acknowledging it for you after going through this with your dad. And I mean, you're, I mean, it, it's an ongoing thing. I, I feel like it, you know, once you're a caregiver, it, it doesn't stop, right. You're, you know, it's an ongoing thing. What do you feel like was the, the most difficult challenge that you had to overcome to get yeah, your dad settled? You know, I, I, I think, I think the, the biggest challenge that we saw was was really just the the sticker shock of some of the care that's out there. Yes. Um, it was overwhelming. I mean, um, you know, whether assisted living facilities, many of them in New Jersey, costing over ten thousand dollars a month. Um, oh. You know, some of the, the places we saw, and like uh, we just we we don't have that kind of resource, um, and it just felt like when I was talking to people, it felt like the options were either do these very expensive, because uh, he's, he's not at, you know, he's not at a certain level of care that, you know, some other types of options are there. So, you know, the, what was available was, it felt like it was, you know, kind of, you know, these very expensive options or basically, you know, bleeding out all of his savings until he's eligible for Medicaid. And I, I just, that, that didn't feel right. You know, like he's, you know, he, he's worked hard over his life. He hasn't saved up a whole lot, but, you know, it just, you know, I want to make sure that he and others can live a life of dignity and decency. You know, he's not asking for the moon. He doesn't live a fancy life. Um, but, you know, when he's not in a position to walk, you know, he can't go grocery shopping. He can't drive a car. Like, I, I, and I'm down in D.C. half the year. You know, I'm, I'm just, how do I feel like he's going to, you know, be able to, take care, you know, and I think that that's what was really difficult about that all and, and just feeling, you know, feeling um, the constraints of, of, of money and resources um, that was, that was made me feel frustrated sometimes. Maybe I, you know, it was like, part of me was like, oh, like, uh, you know, I, I've, I've worked in public service my whole career, <laughs> you know, I have, I, I probably could have made a lot more money doing something else, uh, but, you know, I, 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 I don't want to have regrets for the choices I made in that way. I feel very blessed to have done the work that I've done, but, um, you know, I, I do wish that I could have been able to afford some of the, you know, some of the things that, you know, that were before my dad. So, but it's, it's a tough challenge. I think the sticker shock of it is there for everyone in, in your situation. It It is pretty, um, it's pretty horrifying and it can definitely exhaust any financial resources that somebody has saved. And of course, I don't know that America is known for being, that we're great savers. So many people have, you know, virtually nothing. And what do you do? It's, it, it's a, well, it is to say it's a problem is a huge understatement. Mm -hmm. But do you feel like th there there is hope with, within Congress that somehow, may, you know, maybe a lot more Congress people have to have a, a similar situation, experience this to, to really, to get it? Yeah, look, um, you know, I, I, I think the challenge that I find that's really frustrating is that whether it's about this issue of care or about affordability writ large, just in someone's life or housing or other things, it, it just doesn't feel like our, our politics is are actually, you know, focus on these issues that are important to people, you know, and, and I say that knowing full well, you know, I'm, I'm down there in Congress. I see this with my own eyes, but it just, you know, I think that's why people are losing faith and trust in government sometimes because, you know, they turn on the news and it feels like it's just, you know, 
just this political tug of war, you know, which side can get more power. And, and, you know, it doesn't always feel like the, you know, that, that we're focused on, you know, these types of solutions and trying to find real um, answers to these problems that people are facing. So I, I'm certainly going to try yeah. and, and trying to, to raise these issues up and, and make sure. Uh, but I, I think it's also important that, you know, that the American people really register that this is important to them, you know, and that, like, that they need help. Uh, and that, like, you know, we, we shouldn't be in a situation where so many Americans um, that are, you know, entering their, their, their senior years that, you know, that they have to live with so much anxiety, you know, in their yeah. life, right? Absolutely. So I, I hope that we can change and fix it. And I do feel like coming out from this experience that, you know, I certainly am going to make this a, a big part of how, you know, what are the, in terms of prioritization of the issues that I want to focus in on, you know, making sure care, whether it's about, you know, being a young dad and care uh, that we want for our children and our grandchildren. I think everyone in America can agree upon that, right? Um, and then also, you know, just, you know, care for our seniors, um, especially as we have such a fast aging population and, you know, we see the expenses that are, are just getting out of control right now. There, there's something that, you know, something significant that needs to happen for us to be able to meet this moment. I mean, uh, I'm a baby boomer and there's lots of us out there and we're aging quickly. And let me tell you, we're all worried about just what you're talking about. And, you know, the sticker shock of it is um, because even people who uh, have saved, uh, you could go through your money so quickly and then really right wind up with with nothing. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, you're one person and think of multiply your situation by gazillions of people that are going through this. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, you know, my, my you know, from my father's side, you know, probably one of the things, if not the thing that bothered him the most, you know, that he would talk to me about is how he felt so bad that that he wasn't able to um carry these costs on his own and that, you know, myself and my sister need to help out. And, you know, I think as a parent, sometimes, you know, like I feel it right now with my kids, like I, I want to hopefully, you know, be able to make sure my kids don't have to worry about me, <laughs> you know, and uh, I don't, I don't ever want to be seen as a, like a burden. And I try to express to my dad, you know, he's not a burden. He's my dad. And, and you know, I'm, I'm uh, we're family and, you know, we'll do our best to try to, to manage this between us all. Um, but, you know, I, I think that that's that's part of what I what I see in people, you know, just this feeling like, um, oh, like I, I should have been able to take care of this or or whatnot. So it's it's a challenge and it's very emotional in that kind of way for a lot of people. And I think that emotional aspect, the exhaustion, but also just the anxiety, um, you know, it's, it's something we have to pay attention to as much as just the physical injuries and the other issues that are out. There. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to be optimistic for the world and for myself and all my contemporaries that people like you in Congress will be able to affect some kind of a positive change. Maybe it won't affect me, but think of you know somewhere that when your kids get older, they won't have to go through something like this. You know, I hope for, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I like think, you know, I as I've so. gone around the state, you know. A lot that I've talked to with seniors about high prescription drug costs and other issues, and I've been working over the last few years trying to, try to try to do this. And you know, we've made some progress. You know, capping insulin costs at thirty five dollars a month. You know, yes. uh, legislation I wrote that would cap out of pocket costs for seniors with their prescription drugs um, at you know one hundred sixty six dollars a month um, or two thousand dollars a year. Like things like that are moving the needle. Um, and so, you know, I'm hoping that myself and hopefully others I can work with can try to really address some of these concerns about care um, that you know, are, are so necessary and, you know, know that it's, it's something that's going to get worse and worse um, in so many different ways. You know, we're not prepared for it right now as a country um, and we got to do better. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, let me ask you this, Andy. How is your dad? Is he settled? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking. Um, 
I mean, he still has a lot of a lot of challenge. He's been able to recover to some level, but you know, will never quite be where he was. And you know, I think the concern also we just have is, you know, what next? You know, we we don't know. You know, if there could be another type of of accident or another type of health development. Um, so you know, I just feel like there's a bit of a feeling of nice knife's edge in that kind of way, but. At least right now we can take a breath. Uh, we've reached a level where, you know, we can uh, where where, you know, the, there aren't these uh, crises and emergencies every day, um, and it's allowing us a little time to kind of think through what comes next in all right. of our lives. So, right. no, thank you for asking, and and uh, thank you for giving me a chance to be able to just share that with people, and you know, hopefully we can find ways to be able to lift up these stories and figure out how it is we can make. Uh, make things better. I feel hopeful like you. I wouldn't be doing the work that I do if I didn't feel hopeful um, that we can try to solve these problems. So thanks for bringing it to an, you know bringing this to this moment with a positive note. Well, you know, for uh, this video series that we do, Scan FYI, uh, so much of it is raising awareness, public education, telling people about being prepared for the unexpected. But you know, sometimes you're just not prepared. And then you're plunged into this reality as, as you were. And uh, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. And, and I'm going to be optimistic that we're all going to do better going forward. I like That's to think so. I like to thanks. think so. All right. Well, Congressman Andy Kim, thank you so much for being my guest today and sharing this story. Well, thank you for having me on and, and for lifting up the importance of, of caregiving and, and health. Uh, in our society. Thank you for doing that. Well, at SCAN, we appreciate that caregiving is, uh, it's it's something that most people are involved in, in one way or another at all stages of life. So remember out there, if it's important to you, it's important to us. I'm Andrea Tarr, and I'll see you next time on SCAN FYI. Bye, everyone. Bye, Congressman. <laughs>